a recording and we'll start fresh. So welcome everyone to our final winter webinar uh, that is featuring home visiting in Illinois, partnering to promote healthy child development. I want to introduce you to Karen Williams. Karen is the technical assistance and uh, training specialist at the Ounce of Prevention Fund. She is also a peer reviewer with Healthy Families America. She is uh, has over 15 years experience in early childhood programs. She's been a classroom teacher, a home visitor, a program supervisor, uh, and she is also has interest in reflective practice, coordinated intake, and infant mental health. So welcome, Karen. We're glad to have you with us today. We're going to start with a poll, and that poll is going to be finding out who is with us today. So I'm going to pop up the poll. You should see it pop up on your screen right now. So if you click the answer that best fits your role and hit submit, we'd appreciate that. Uh, if, if, uh, if you don't see your role, this box does scroll. So you can scroll it up and, and there, there's some other options uh, after the dietitian and nurse. So we'll give folks a few minutes to respond to that. Waiting on a few more responses. If you haven't already, please respond to the poll. And if you are um, not listed, put your role in the chat box. Good morning, Charlotte. Charlotte's one of our monitors. Leading on just a couple more responses. I'm, I'm hoping to get at least 80%. That's my goal. So, all right, looks like we are there. So I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So, uh, Karen, it looks like we've got about 46% um, of our folks on here are from Child and Family Connection staff. And uh, we've got a mix of other providers in here, some speech language pathologists, some DTs. We've got some counselors in here. Looks like we've got a, another Monica is also an EI monitor. We've got uh, Beata is a speech language pathology assistant, some administrative staff. So uh, we've got a pretty good mix of folks here today. So um, this is your group uh, and I'm going to turn it over to you now. Um, actually, let me make sure I can turn it over to you Hang on just a second. There you go. I've given you control. I'm going to stop that. And actually, we do have one more poll, don't we? So I'm going to advance on to the next slide. And because I know you wanted to find out uh, why folks are participating today. So let me go ahead and pull that one up and uh, see what folks say. So this one is a uh, multiple choice. So if you're if you're here participating for a couple of different reasons, um, mark as many reasons that as apply. And we'll give folks a few uh, some a little bit of time to do that. Oh, the results are coming in. Oh. Wow. Oh, you're going to like the, some of these answers here. I'm, I'm seeing, um, waiting on just a few more responses so I can in the poll and post the results up. Just a few more. If you haven't responded already, please do so. All right, let's see what we've got. So in answer to your question of why folks are participating today, the big one is um, interested that you're working with families who receive home visiting, visiting services and wanna learn more. Well, you're in the right spot. Uh, this is gonna be the place where you're gonna learn a lot more about home visiting. It looks like um, uh, we've got some folks that uh, wanna connect families with home visiting services. And you can see it's kind of a, a every, every option has been chosen. And I see Erin has indicated in here that um, she provides infant mental health consultation and would like to learn more about how to collaborate between the two. That's awesome. And Charlotte's talking about uh, how early intervention and home visiting works together. So I know Karen has got all of that information that she's gonna share with you. So 
All right, Karen, I think I'm done with the polls for now, and I'm going to let you uh, take it over. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, whoops, I'm going to go back for just a minute here. I am really excited to be here with you this morning to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, um, bringing the systems of early intervention and home visiting together in Illinois. So as uh, Maria mentioned, I have had the opportunity to work in home visiting for many years, and no matter what my role has been, whether it's supporting programs like I'm doing now or being a home visitor, um, one of the things that I really enjoyed about it is just having the pleasure of working with early intervention with families um, who are in home visiting programs. So yes, we are going to have some polls and chat boxes and try to interact as much as we can today. Um, it helps for me to learn about the experiences that you've already had with home visiting and it helps us just you know, to keep it more alive and real and um, interactive as we go through today, just to make sure is there someone out there listening. Um, so please do participate in those as we go through. We're gonna start by just real briefly looking at our objectives today, which I think you have seen. Oops, there we go. Um, so during our time together today, we wanna to look at the different home visiting models that are currently available in Illinois. We wanna consider the eligibility requirements and the, for each model, and then look at um, the referral process, how to connect families to a home visiting program, and then think together about ways that the early intervention and home visiting systems work together. So, you know, I said we're going to do polls, so we're going to keep going here. We have another poll. I really want to just think about if you had to, today, describe home visiting to a family, how comfortable do you feel doing that? So, I'm going to ask Maria if you can pull that poll up. So one is you feel not comfortable at all, and five would be very comfortable. See where people are. It gives me a sense of what, what we know and what, um, how often you've been doing it, maybe. And I see uh, we've got results coming in. Uh, just uh, waiting on a few more responses, if you could. If you haven't already responded, go ahead and take this opportunity to do so. All right, let's see what we've got here. So our results look like the vast majority, over you know, half of the folks here say they're fairly pretty comfortable with making those referrals, but there are some that are um, not quite as comfortable as we'd like. Okay. All right. There we go. Close down. Okay, great. Well, thank you. That's helpful to know um, as we go through. I know there's a lot of knowledge and expertise already in the room today, so I want to honor that. My hope is that by the end of our time together, each of you will could move up a notch on it, or if you were already very comfortable, um, that maybe you'll have learned something new that you'll be able to share with you. So for those of you who are not very comfortable at all, we're going to just talk a little bit about what is home visiting. So home visiting is a family support program. It's someone to talk to about the struggles and joys of being a parent. Home visitors talk to parents about what their experience is like as a parent, sometimes weekly, with a question like, what's it been like for you to be a parent this week? Which is something that oftentimes parents don't necessarily get asked. And then we actively listen and we accept whatever the response has been, whether it's, oh, it's been a great week or it's been really hard and horrible this week a collaborative approach. So home visiting is really partnering with parents to build on their strengths in order to deal with the risks and challenges that we know will come up. It's an opportunity for parents to reflect on their interactions with their children and the power of their role as parents. Many parents don't have or don't take the time to really think about why they're doing the things they're doing or how they want to interact with their children. They just do it because they're kind of in survival mode. Also, um, home visiting is evidence-based. So each of the models we'll talk about today are based on extensive and ongoing research. So a few more things about home visiting. Um, it's personalized. So each visit is personalized to, and tailored to the family. Uh, of course, curriculum and information are provided, but we really try and make it specific to what the parent has expressed interest in learning more about or maybe a concern that they have. So it's not, oh, well, your baby's nine months today. So every time a baby turns nine months, this is what we talk about. The families get a lot of say in what happens during that. 
It's also free and voluntary. This really gives parents control. They get to decide how long they want to participate and they hear from the very beginning that they can end services whenever they want. Home visiting is flexible. So home visitors come to where the parents are, work with parents' schedules and their life situations. So usually we like to do visits in the home, but they can also be done in a library or McDonald's or a relative's home or a homeless or domestic violence shelter if the parent requests. And finally, relationship-based. Home visiting is based on a, building a trusting relationship with the parents, learning about their family cultures and values. Um, it prioritizes this at the very beginning of services and throughout the time that services are provided. Okay, so who are home visitors? Home visitors can have many different names, such as family support specialists, parent educators, case managers. They also have different educational backgrounds. They can be nurses, teachers, social workers, or some other, may have some other educational background. Regardless, all home visitors receive extensive training before beginning their work with families. They receive one to two weeks of training on their specific home visiting model as well as up to a week of training on the curriculum that their program uses. And then they have ongoing training on every screening tool that they use with families, as well as such areas as prenatal and child development, safety, cultural sensitivity, intimate partner violence, substance use, child abuse and neglect, and the effects of trauma on families. So when looking for a home visitor, when a supervisor is looking to hire, they're looking for really specific skills um, because we know that it takes a unique individual to be able to go into someone's home and work with them. And so one of the most important is the ability to build trust and develop relationships with families. This you know, needs to happen pretty quickly or you're not going to be back in the door for the second visit. Also someone who's capable of working well with both adults and children. So sometimes we may get applicants who work, do really well with children, but are not used to being around the adults. And so that can be a unique skill set there as well. Also important is that they're non-judgmental, that they're able to accept and respect family values and parenting practices that are different than their own. And the ability to see strengths in a family that may also have needs and risks. And so we know that families come to us with both needs and strengths. Um, and to look at a family who some people might look at as a really challenging or a chaotic family, but still be able to look and identify some strengths. So those are just a few of the skills um, that we look for in home visitors. So before we go on, we're gonna do another poll. I wanna know what home visiting programs are available in the communities that you work in. Let's take a minute just to find out about that. So here again, you can choose as many as you know about in your community. And if you don't know, you can choose, I'm not sure. Yep, we're seeing a, a responses come in. If you, um, please, you know, click on those that apply to you and, and then hit submit. <clears throat> responses are coming in so give it a few more seconds if you haven't already responded go ahead and do so okay I'm going to throw the results up there and it looks like most folks are, are very familiar with Head Start or Early Head Start and then the others not quite as as much are available. Okay, well that is helpful to see there. Thank you for participating in that and letting us know. Um, we are going to get to the specific models, but we're going to talk a little bit in general again about home visiting and what some of the benefits are. So first of all, look at health. So moms and babies who participate in home visiting are healthier. Um, during and after pregnancy, home visiting programs promote maternal health by helping mothers schedule regular doctor's visits. Um, supporting healthy nutrition, reducing stress levels, and providing resources for um, 
to help parents to quit smoking or other substance use. Babies benefit as well. So one study found that mothers who participated in a home visiting program prenatally were half as likely to have a baby born with low birth weight, which greatly reduced the baby's risk for health and developmental problems. Another benefit is that children are better prepared for school and parents are more engaged in their learning. So home visiting programs promote positive parenting practices that help parents better prepare their children for school. Parents enrolled in home visiting programs are more likely to have a safe play environment at home, provide age appropriate books, and engage children in structured teaching activities. Home visiting programs also have demonstrated long-term positive impacts on children's academic achievement. Some other benefits are that children are safer. Home visiting programs are associated with reduced rates of child maltreatment and injuries. In one study, children of participating families experienced 40% fewer injuries between the ages of two and four, and they were 35% less likely to visit an emergency room compared with children who were not enrolled. Families who enroll in home, in home visiting are also more self-sufficient. Participating in a home visiting program leads to higher rates of enrollment and more hours spent in educational and training programs, which leads to higher family income levels. And finally, home visiting programs save money. The short and long-term benefits of home visiting programs largely outweigh the overall costs incurred from the implementation of them. Studies have shown that high fidelity home visiting programs for at-risk families have a more than $5 return for every tax dollar spent in reduced health care and welfare services. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes here and look at a little video. This is from the iGrow website about home visiting in Illinois. All right, so give me just a second to switch a few things over. Uh, let's see here. All right. Let's hope this works. Can you imagine how different parenting would be if babies came with instruction manuals? Parenting and bonding with a baby or toddler can sometimes be stressful and overwhelming. That's why the Illinois Home Visiting System offers in-person support to parents with young children. Through a combination of state and federal funding, home visiting services are available to expectant parents and families with children from birth through age three. Home visitors work directly with families in the most influential learning environment that they have, their own home. Home visitors support enriching parent-child interactions that help unlock a child's full potential, preparing them for long-term success in school and beyond. Also, home visitors not only support parenting, but may collaborate with other programs and services to connect the family to more supports and resources that they may need. In many cases, a family is introduced to home visiting programs when a local clinic or social service program has identified a pregnant woman or new mother that could benefit from additional resources. But anyone can make a referral, including schools, community resource centers, social services, and health providers. The first years of life are a critical time for brain development and family bonding to lay the foundation for future success. Learn more about the Illinois Home Visiting Program by visiting www.igroillinois.org. To learn about more early childhood videos, visit www.partnerplanact.org. Can you imagine how different? Sorry about that. Uh, all right, let me uh, switch this back over to the uh, other screen. Okay, uh, Karen, I think we're back. Oh, okay. Hey. Remote control again. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Right. Well, thank you. trying to advance here, let's see. There we go, so this all important slide here. <laughs> right. So we've just, I feel like I've been talking for a while and we've covered a lot. So I wanted to just take a break here. 
Um, I have not seen any questions pop up so far in the chat box, but I think I just lost my ability to see the chat box somehow. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I would love to answer them. And if not, again, as they come up, feel free to type them. But I'm not seeing any questions coming up yet. And I did want to remind folks that I posted the link to, first off, I posted the link to the handout for today earlier. Uh, I'll post it again here in case you have missed it through the, the chat. And I've also posted the link to the video we just watched in the chat box as well. So I'll monitor the chat and, uh, and if there's anything that comes up, I'll let you know. Okay, great, thank you. So we will keep going. So we're gonna look at the five different home visiting models, the major ones available in Illinois. I cannot advance right now. I don't know if you can for me, Maria, but I seem to have lost my ability to do just about anything <laughs> since oh, we switched oh. back. We, so. we can't have that. So let me <laughs> figure out what's going on here. I'm going to take control of the mouse for just a moment. Um, let's see. Okay, try it now. It's not advancing. Okay, well, let's just advance it for you there. How's that? Okay, thank you. That's great. So again, as I said, these are the five main home visiting models available in Illinois today. Um, we're going to talk about each one of them and explore their eligibility requirements and then look at where they're available in the state. Each model has some basic eligibility guidelines we'll look at and then individual programs may also have additional requirements based on how they're funded. So in Illinois, there's three main funders of home visiting. They're the Illinois State Board of Education, the Illinois Department of Human Services, um, the Maternal Infant Early Childhood Home Visiting Program, or MCV, is uh, more commonly known. So you can see that these home visiting programs get a, a variety of funding. Sometimes the same program may have two or three different funders. So it's a blend of federal and state dollars. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at, and we're just going to go in alphabetical order to be fair to everyone. Um, no favorites here. So Baby Talk. Baby Talk's mission is to positively impact child development and nurture healthy parent-child relationships through the critical early years. And the model really emphasizes building a system of support through effective collaboration, identifying needs through proper screening, and delivering appropriate services to each unique family. So in the baby talk model, the home visits focus on establishing and deepening that working relationship with the family, supporting the child's development through strengthening the parent-child relationship, empowering parents to set goals for themselves and for their children, and for supporting families' mastery in their growth and development. So as we look at eligibility for baby talk, um, they provide a universal approach, so they don't have you know, specific families that they're targeting, they provide a universal approach for families with children prenatally through age six, but they're really working to identify and serve those families who are most at risk. Um, they offer individual home visits as well as groups and community referrals. Um, their initial encounters when they're reaching out to families can be done at hospitals, WIC clinics, high schools, and other social service agencies to identify the eligible families. And again, it says at the top, they serve prenatally through age six. Some programs will serve until like from prenatally until three, and some will serve all the way till five. It just depends on their funder requirements. So there could be two different programs in the state that offer something a little bit different. But currently, um, Baby Talk is spread pretty widely over Illinois. There's 60 programs available um, from Northern to Southern, East and West all over the state. So the next model we'll look at is Early Head Start and Head Start, which many of you said you were familiar with. Um, so this model offers both home-based and center-based services. For today, we're just gonna focus on their home-based services. So Early Head Start programs are designed to nurture a child's um, healthy attachments between the parent and the child, and the services really encompass a full range of the family's needs from pregnancy through a child's third birthday. And then Head Start, promotes child's growth and development in a positive learning environment, focusing from age three to five. 
uh, through services that focus on early learning, health, and family well-being. So the home visits for Early Head Start and Head Start um, focus on promoting school readiness, delivering comprehensive services to children and families, partnering with parents to observe and learn about their child, and then using everyday parent-child interactions, routines, the things that are already in the house to help children learn. So eligibility for Early Head Start and Head Start, they enroll families between the two um, who are pregnant or parenting children birth to five years old. And again, they offer individual home visits and group socializations. Their, part of their um, eligibility screening is an income verification. So they do target families who are low income, but they also give priority to families with children with a suspected or diagnosed delay or disability, regardless of the income. So that's kind of that and homeless families are the two exceptions to um, the family having to be low income. So again, head, early Head Start and Head Start are statewide. There's 47 grantees throughout Illinois, but each of them serves several communities. And total for their home base slots, they have 4,578 home base The next model we'll look at is the Healthy Families America model. So Healthy Families approach is relationship-based, culturally respectful, family-centered, and grounded in the parallel process. So it's just the belief that the relationships that home visitors build with parents serve as a model for supporting the positive relationships they want to see them develop with their own children. So the goals of the home visits in healthy families are to build trusting relationships with parents in order to cultivate that nurturing parent-child relationship, to promote healthy growth and development in families, to enhance family functioning by reducing risk and building on strengths and protective factors, and to prevent child abuse and neglect. So in this model, families are enrolled prenatally or before their baby is three months old. This is something a little bit different about this model. They do offer services for three to five years, but you, they have to be enrolled before the baby's three months old. So the, you know, time restraint on enrolling. The eligibility here is based on screening for risk factors related to child abuse and neglect. And again, they can offer services until the child turns five. Um, some offer till three, again, depending on the funder. And many of these programs offer parent groups and or doula services as well. And currently there's 44 programs throughout the state of Illinois, again, spread out all over the state. Next is Nurse Family Partnership. So the mission of Nurse Family Partnership is to positively transform the lives of vulnerable babies, mothers, and families. All home visitors are nurses in this model and they focus on the health of the mother and the baby. So goals of the home visits here are to support healthy pregnancies and births by encouraging women to engage in good preventive healthcare practices, to provide health and development education, both for the mother and the child, and life coaching for the mother and her family to develop a vision for their futures. So as we look at eligibility for nurse family partnership, they focus on low income first time mothers who are pregnant. And again, they have this time restraint that they have to enroll families at or before the 28th week of pregnancy. So this is one home visiting model that EI probably will not be referring to uh, much because it's a first time pregnancy and at or before the 28th week. Uh, but NFP does make many referrals to early intervention. So one to know about and still collaborate with. They do offer visits up to the child's second birthday. So many NFP programs then are looking for another program to transition children into, sometimes another one of these other home visiting models at the age of two. And currently there's four programs in Illinois serving the following areas. So there's a program in Keene County, one that serves Marion and Jefferson counties, Sinuan County, and then Champaign-Urbana area as well. Um, I heard from a program the other day that they are looking to expand and there may be some new ones opening up as well. So the next model we're going to look at is parents as teachers. 
And Parents as Teachers is a comprehensive home visiting parent education model that consists of four components. Personal visits, group connections, a resource network, and child screening. So their home visits focus on increasing parent knowledge of early child development and improving parenting practices. Um, again, early detection of developmental delays and health issues, preventing child abuse and neglect, and increasing children's school readiness and success. Um, here, I'll just say one thing about Parents as Teachers. Parents as Teachers is a model, and then they also have a curriculum that some programs use. And so you could have a Healthy Families program that uses Parents as Teachers. So sometimes that gets confusing, but we're talking specifically about the model of Parents as Teachers today. So they enroll families with children birth to three or prenatally and they offer home visits and the group connections. And many programs are part of a local school district or sometimes a regional office of education, but not all, some private social service agencies have that as well. And currently there's 109 programs across Illinois, so pretty widely available as well. So, We look at all of these home visiting programs, some things that they all include, so that I did not include in each slide, they all include ongoing developmental screenings. And almost all of them use the ages and stages questionnaire and then the ages and stages social emotional. They also um, include perinatal depression screenings. So for those that enroll prenatally, they'll do the screening prenatally and then after the baby's born as well. And then for each subsequent pregnancy as well. Also, um, support around selection of a medical home for everyone in the family and not just the children that they're working with. They also include personalized referrals to other community supports. So this could be basic needs, you know, food, clothing, housing, diapers. Um, also could be um, childcare, adult education, early intervention, of course, and then other services as appropriate, so mental health or substance use and partner violence services as well. They include the opportunity to set personal goals um, based on something that the parent wants to achieve. Sometimes these goals are just for the parent. They may not have anything to do with the child. Um, sometimes they're for the whole family or sometimes they're specific to the child. Also information on health, safety, nutrition, and child development. Um, again, all home visiting models use an evidence-based curriculum. I'll also include observations of parent-child interactions. And they use these observations that they're doing um, throughout services really to guide the services that they provide to families. And also they all include activities to encourage healthy child development. So a parent-child activity is part of every home visit. So as we talk about home visiting, I said these are the five main models. There's also some other programs in Illinois that provide home visits. And so that can be confusing. You know, sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, this, this person came to my house and we did an ASQ or we did this. So some of these you may be familiar with, some maybe not so much. Let's just go through. So family case management offers two programs. So I'd imagine that most of you are familiar with this, this high-risk infant follow-up or APORS as it's sometimes called. Uh, this is a referral that comes from the hospital or from the Illinois Department of Public Health for babies who are born prematurely with or with risks such as a positive tox screen, low birth weight, a congenital birth anomaly, or multiple births. So services are provided by a public health nurse, um, often from a county health department, and they are come into the home about six times up until the child is about two years of age. Sometimes they will do some of their visits in the office as well, but they come into the home a few times. Another program that family case management offers is Better Birth Outcomes. And this is um, prenatal mothers with health risks, and they have a monthly contract. They start about 20 weeks um, prenatal, and then they continue services until the baby is about six weeks old. And again, these are nurses, um, part of the family case management program. They focus on healthy pregnancies and births, and both of these services are offered statewide as well. Family Connects is another program that does home visits. So this is a universal home visit with the nurse and it's only available in 
two counties right now. I believe I'm saying that accurately. It's expanding, and so there are other um, areas of the state that we'll be coming to soon. Um, it's, so it's every baby born at a certain hospital has a nurse visit the family while they're still in the hospital, and they're offered this home visit. And it can be just one visit sometimes, or it can go on a little bit longer, um, maybe two or three visits, depending on the needs of the family. So um, whoops, that one is available right now in Stevenson and Peoria counties. And there are some programs starting, I've heard in the Western suburbs and also in the city of Chicago. I know there's been a big question. There's some programs starting up, so maybe they're already offering services. Um, but they really focus on things like new moms and babies health, help with things like diapering, swaddling, bathing, managing crying, and then providing connection to resources such as home visiting programs as well. And then the final one is parent mentoring programs. So this is a program offered for parents of children birth to 12 years. And each family that's interested is matched up with a mentor to support them. And the mentors are volunteers. They receive training um, and they can provide weekly home visits for up to a year. And the focus of this is to develop the capacity and confidence in parents to nurture the development of their children. So this one, um, right now, I'm aware that it's available at one site in DuPage County and in the city of Chicago, but it's not as widespread as some of the others, but it's another one where they do come out to the home and provide some services for parents. So let's stop again, because I feel like I just covered a whole lot, and I see that there are um, some great links being put up in the chat box for more information on all of these. I just want to, again, pause and see if any questions. Yeah, so well, I do see there's <coughs> Family Connects maybe coming to Kankakee, and yes, I've heard that they are definitely expanding. That's awesome. Um, the only comment that we had was from um, P. Singler, who, uh, you know, it just finds it challenging to be able to uh, access a comprehensive resource list for all the programs in their in their service area, but that she knows that in Chicago that families can, can connect 311 or the yeah. City of Chicago Early Learning website. So she just just makes makes some comments about just wishing there were uh, there's better awareness of uh, home visiting programs in order to share with families. Yeah, and that's something that um, home visiting programs are definitely working to is getting. List, making sure that they're listed on some of those resource lists like 311 has um, and in other areas around the state getting put on those countywide resource guides so that people are aware of them, whether it's you know, a social service provider or the family themselves seeking something out. So I think that's awareness is a huge piece of it, of just you know, helping people understand what is home visiting, what does that mean, and who can benefit from it. So thank you for that. Yeah, and, and as you noted, um, my co-host Alyssa and I are both kind of posting links to for more information about each one of those specific uh, programs. But of course, you can link to all that correctly from the iGrow website as well. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other than the um, the last three we talked about, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I don't see any other questions, so I think we can probably move forward. Okay, I did get my chat box back now somehow, so I can see. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So um, let's go ahead and maybe some will come up. Um, let's, oops. So I'm going to give an opportunity for everyone to type in the chat box. I want to just hear from you now that we've talked all about home visiting. What are some differences that you see between early intervention and home visiting? Actually, just type those in the chat box. Tell me what's different. So now it's a waiting game to see the first. It is. Oh, <laughs> I see eligibility. Look at that. Thank you, Charlotte, for starting us out there. I know I'm part of, I, Maria mentioned my interest in reflective practice. And part of reflective practice, practice is getting comfortable with waiting, which is different on a webinar to have silence than it is when you're sitting in a room. But I'm, I'm practicing that. So I see a couple more. So frequency and type of services delivered. <laughs> yes, waiting can be hard. but I also have to remember you have to have time to think of it, type it, and then remember to hit submit or return, whatever you do, so. Okay, services are different. Yes, the actual delivery of services is different. Oh, training can be different, yes. 
Okay, Nicole says, as far as I can see, EI comes in to determine eligibility for certain services. Okay, for DTOT, PT, yes. Great, fees, yes. Fees are not charged in home visiting and they, they have to be for you all to get paid, right, in early intervention. Great. Okay, we'll continue to type those in. I'm loving the participation because I'm going to ask you to continue. I, that was just a question that gets you started thinking. Um, okay, another one home visitor versus multiple providers in early intervention. Yeah, that can be a big difference. And um, home visiting, it's one provider that's providing everything, whereas in there's specialized, more specialized providers in early intervention. Great. Okay, we'll continue to type those if you have any more. I'm going to go on to the next one. So we, there's definitely some differences between the two systems, but as I look at it, we also have some things in common. Um, we have, we all are working with young children and their families in their own homes. Um, there's not many other people who understand the joys and the benefits to that and also the challenges and the difficulties that that can um, we can encounter sometimes. We're also partnering with parents to observe and learn about their children, to think about what does the behavior mean and why are we seeing it. We're both in there promoting healthy growth and development, um, supporting parents' understanding of child development. We know that so much, many of behavior problems really come to understanding normal health and growth, healthy growth and development, or understanding when that we're not seeing that typical growth and development that we want to see. Also supporting parents understanding, whoops, I just read that one, sorry, providing activities to encourage parent-child interaction, um, and then connecting families with additional resources as needed. So I do see a lot of things that we have in common, um, and I think that sometimes that top one, working with young children and families, being in the home, is really something that sets us apart from other services that families received. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat box here. We got a couple more families. Sometimes understand more clearly EI, but not always understand what the home visitor is there to do. Yeah, that, that is a challenge to a program that builds their foundation and building a relationship with families. That's the start. And so, um, you know, saying we wanna help support you and we want to think with you about, you know, things that are important to you, how you wanna raise your children. It's not as clear, it's not as prescriptive. Um, I see another comment here that we have one family who received outside services Head Start after four years. Okay, well, we're hoping that that's going to improve. So back here, my slides are moving without me touching. I'm not sure <laughs> how that's happening, but I want to hear your experience. So Katie got us started that she has a family who's received Head Start services. Wanting to know not necessarily what models you've worked with, but for those of you who have worked in EI for a while with CFC. How have you worked together with home visiting programs in the past? Give me some ideas of what your experiences have been like, whether you're a service coordinator or a therapist, um, what kind of interactions have you had or how have you collaborated? I'm going to take this question. Looks like Katie had um, added a question in EI. Who typically refers these outside services? Is it during intake? So, you know, it can happen at any point in time, Katie. Um, if the service coordinator is recognizing some additional needs, they can uh, during intake they can make those referrals. Um, but it also will happen at any point in time. Um, anyone can make a referral. The, um, the key, though, is to make sure that the service coordinator is aware of, of, of those. And, and ultimately, um, it's, it's always best to keep the service coordinator in the, in the communication of all of that, uh, since their role is to coordinate services. But if you have a particular contact and you want to make a referral for a family, anyone can do so. Just share that you've done that. So... Um, all right, and then uh, I see a whole bunch more yeah. uh, responses, Karen. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, so I see some of you saying that you've had the home visitor, somebody from parents as teachers, attending a six-month meeting um, or attending EI meetings, whether the annual, the transition, and being part of the team. Um, and here, if the home visiting program made the original referral, thanks, Jen, that you may go out 
to, um, with the home visitor for the intake appointment. That's a great idea. It um, really can help develop a good relationship between the parent and the service coordinator. It's kind of that warm handoff, right? It's not this unknown person coming in. Um, combined visits, I see great. Um, let's see, we usually just, okay, so the providers are the ones who seem to overlap the most, okay. And I see we often reserve, Mary says, you often refer families to home visiting programs. I'd love to hear that. Um, and brought home visiting programs to the CFC to present to service coordinators and providers. Great, I hear some great positive experience. Brianne says she's had positive collaborations with parents as teachers and healthy families, home visitors, um, both referring to them and then being getting referrals from them. Oh, and um, Ron, I think I'm saying, if I'm saying your name right, used to be a home visitor for early head start. Good. Um, that you do, you build this great and unique relationship with the family being in their home. Um, I'm just reading here, there seems to be a gap in the communication and partnership between home visiting services and the EI providers. So I, she says, hopefully that's changed. So I'm hoping that that is changing. I'm really encouraged by what I hear you all saying. I, um, as a home visitor, loved the interactions that I got to have with EI providers when, when that was possible. And it did take some creative scheduling many times, um, but I really think that it was very powerful for the family and for you know, each of the providers involved. Ooh, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, <laughs> so it's... I don't know, I'm not you. touching it. <laughs> okay, I don't know, I wasn't touching either, and all of a sudden we're like six slides ahead. Maybe somebody pressed that go faster button and said we needed to speed up a little. Maybe. Um, but yeah, we're gonna continue to talk about this idea of collaboration and some ideas, and I love the input um, that you've given. So thank you for participating and typing into that chat box. So I'm just gonna, the next thing we're gonna do is talk about what are some of the barriers that you face? So I know it's not easy, I know it takes time, but what are some of the barriers you faced in collaborating with home visiting programs? If we can pull up that poll. Yeah, and, and those are some of the more common barriers that we've noticed, so you can choose as many as applicable. Um, but if there are other barriers that you're not familiar with um, or that, you, that aren't listed there, please use the chat box to share that. And definitely, if you if you click an other, please please explain that in the chat box as well. All right. So Leah's just saying she hasn't had any experience yet with working with home visiting. So that's you know that's that's. It just hasn't come up yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Waiting on a few more responses. So it looks like same for Nicole. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and post the results, um, but it looks like I know Jen's added some other comments there in the uh, chat box. So, okay. uh, kind of a mix. Yeah, okay, so I see some don't have experience, some, yeah, having to, you don't get the information that they're involved in home visiting program, or yes, sometimes staff changes and they have a new home visitor and you don't know it. So let's look at the poll here, it looks like kind of a, other was the number one answer, but otherwise split between I don't know how to connect with them and I don't work with them. I usually refer the families to the service coordinator when questions come up. So, okay. And then a few of each of the others. So we do have a mix there. So I think if I look at um, some of these that are listed here, not knowing how to connect um, or referring them to the service coordinator when questions come up. So just remember, as Maria said, that anyone can make those referrals and hopefully after today, you'll feel a little more confident um, making a referral and have some tools that we're gonna talk about in a couple of minutes for how to do that. Um, so I'm looking, I see all kinds of things in the chat box. Thank you, I'm, I'm safe. So Katie had a great experience 
Um, there's still a need to enhance awareness of the EI procedures to the home visiting program because we do experience misunderstandings between the family and the home visiting program. Okay, yeah, we want families to know that it's not a duplication of services, that we're very distinct programs that can work hand in hand. Um, and then Regina says, I'm, she's usually unaware of the additional home visiting programs unless she crossed paths. So unless you're you know, coming in as someone else is leaving or this parents let you know. Okay. You know, one of the, the things that can happen with that is, is during um, when you're doing intake or, or even just like, do you have other people coming into your home, um, mm -hmm. you know, to provide services? Because sometimes we just don't ask the question. You know, uh, and other times I think too that uh, um, parents really aren't clear on, you know, as to who we represent. Uh, so I know like for early intervention, we sometimes get confused with DCFS. And uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, the families just aren't clear on, on what organizations are necessarily coming into their home as well. Yeah, no, that's very true. And they may not say I have a home visiting program or I have, um, I worked, the Healthy Families program that I worked at for years was out of the health department. And so I would be in a visit and someone would call me and say, oh, I'm here with my WIC nurse. Because everyone that, you know, came, that worked in that building where the WIC clinic was must work for WIC. And so you know, I was their WIC nurse to them. I was not a nurse. I did not work for WIC. But um, there was just this, they didn't have to know. I have, I'm a, have a home visitor from the Healthy Families program. It was, there's just this person that comes and talks to me every week. And so they may not always be clear, especially at the beginning of services, what home visiting program they're a part of. They could definitely find out by asking the person who's coming in or maybe by looking at the materials. Um, but again, they, it's not always clear to them. Okay, and yeah, and if they have a lot, if they have lots of providers, I think that was, um, Regina, she said she's that often parents often get confused in the organizations, especially if they have or think they're sure already collaborating with others. And Jen said, you know, if they have a ton of people coming in to help their child, so if they have you know several providers coming in and then somebody else, they may just assume the other person's from EI too because everybody else is coming in, or they may have a nurse coming from the health department and for you know one of those other programs we talked about. So yeah, it can be confusing for families too. So well, we're going to talk a little bit next about ways to connect um, families to home visiting programs. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one. But let's first talk about how we can work together as systems to collaborate. So thinking about, we talked about some of our similarities and our differences. How can we use those to benefit families and children? I think one of the first ways is to learn about one another. And the fact that you are all on this webinar today shows that you're committed to learning about the um, home visiting system in Illinois. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, I think, you know, one of the first steps that we've been talking about could just be to learn whether or not, ask the families whether they're working with anyone else that comes into their home. And if it turns out to be a home visiting program, ask them to find out which one, even if they can't name it for you. Um, or ask if you do find their, you find out that they're enrolled in a home visiting program, ask to observe a home visit. Not necessarily a joint visit, but just to observe, to kind of understand what happens in those visits. I encourage home visitors to do the same, um, to go and observe, you know, not to do anything other than to be a fly in the wall and see what happens in a therapy session. Another way is to invite home visitors to your meetings. I saw a couple people comment that they've done that. Um, whether it's to your, your IFSP or your annual meeting in the home or to an agency meeting that you have to come and share about their work or attend a coordinated intake community meeting or an early childhood collaboration meeting to hear about the work of home visiting in your area. And we'll talk more about opportunities for that in a few minutes. Another opportunity for collaboration is to schedule joint visits. So I know this can be time consuming. It can be hard with people's different schedules. So it doesn't have to be you know, every visit or even a full visit. If you can overlap a half an hour with the home visitor um, that you're both there together for a little bit, that can be really helpful. Um, it can also be done, I think someone mentioned this as well, in that initial meeting with the service coordinator. So if you learn that a family is enrolled in a home visiting program, ask when they have their visits and see if you can schedule at that time. And that's something that I used to say, you know, if I saw a family every Tuesday at two o'clock, 
and say, well, you know, when, you, when we call, when they call you to set up that appointment, see if they can come on a Tuesday at two o'clock and then we'll all be together there. And finally, another way is to share information between each other, you see, with the family's permission. Um, should have that red and bolded, but of course we need the family's permission. But we're doing some similar work, right? We're doing setting goals, um, setting, up, setting an IFSP goal. So if those can be shared, that's one extra person that can be supporting that. Ideas for parent child activities for therapy sessions. So, you know, if you're doing something that you want the parent to repeat and the home visitor knows about it, when they go in, there's a whole nother hour that they have the opportunity to encourage the parent to continue to work on that with their child. And referrals provided to the family. So if you've provided a referral, then the home visitor could also be following up and seeing if they've been able to access that and helping you out on that. Okay. So let's move into, I'm just checking the chat box here. Um, yes, it may, you may need to clarify how observing is a billable service. And I cannot answer that, um, <laughs> but I understand that your hours are precious and then that may not be something that's billable. Um, but to look for, I think that's a great opportunity to understand each other's work better is to be able to just sit and observe, you know, not on an ongoing basis all the time, but if you could do it once. So we're gonna move into thinking about um, how do we connect families to home visiting services? There we go. So coordinated intake is a hub for home visiting, is for accessing home visiting. Uh, there's these coordinated intake workers who are trained um, in assessing families' needs, referring them to an appropriate home visiting program, and then tracking what happens to their referrals. If you have a coordinated intake system in the community you work in, it's very easy to make a referral to home visiting. Um, these coordinated intake workers, you call them, it's a one-stop shop, you call them with the family's permission, of course, share the family's information. They look at you know, the characteristics of the family, figure out which home visiting models they're eligible for, what would be most appropriate for them, and then they can reach out to the, the family themselves and offer that service. Um, they can also provide referrals to other resources as well. So if you have one, I would um, recommend that you get in contact with them, get to know them, and the other kinds of service, you know, things for housing and um, financial assistance and everything from diapers to car seats, clothing, they have those referrals as well. So they're a great resource. Um, here it says that it's a collaborative process that provides families and professionals a single point of entry for home visiting programs within a community. So currently there are 13 communities in Illinois that have coordinated intake. Um, they are really working to increase this and grow and expand to more communities, but these are the communities it's in currently. Uh, following the webinar, you'll receive a list of these communities and the contact information for the coordinated intake worker in each community. And this information is also available, we'll look at in just a minute, on the iGrow website. If you are in a community that does not currently have coordinated intake, there's also some other ways and resources available to help you connect families to home visiting. So some counties have something called a home visiting network um, that is a group of the home visiting programs that get together on a regular basis and they're sharing referrals and they're talking about um, how they can increase referrals in their area and how they can increase awareness of home visiting. An example of that is in DuPage County, they have one of these networks um, and they are committed. There's 12 different home visiting programs in the county and they're committed to meeting together almost on a monthly basis and learning about each other. And they've created a um, DuPage home visiting network Google groups email address that people can email and they're committed to if a family or uh, you know, a community agency reaches out to any of the home visiting programs, even if they're not eligible for that home visiting service, they'll connect them to someone else. And so that's a great resource if you're in that area and DuPage which does not have coordinated intake right now. Also early childhood collaboration. So home visiting programs are involved in these in most communities and these are usually kind of more of a city by city basis, sometimes a couple communities come together. 
but that's another place where you can get to know about the home visiting programs. School districts and regional offices of education often have home visiting programs um, that are based out of them. And then other home visiting programs. So maybe you know of a nurse family partnership program, but you have a family who the baby's already born and is six months old and you're looking to refer. If you reach out to them, most home visiting programs know the other um, people at the table in their community, right? The other home visiting programs and are really committed. They want families to receive the best services that they can. And so they can maybe tell you about a parents as teachers program down the street that might be applicable or might be a better fit. And then finally, the iGrow website. We're gonna look at this together for a minute here. So I'll give you a minute, Maria, to get to the place we need to be. Okay, yeah, just a second here. And let me give you control again. So we talked earlier about, we had, saw that video that was from iGro, and then we talked about the coordinated um, intake resources so that all of the contact information and the communities that they serve are listed here at the top. So if you go to the iGro website, you'd wanna click up here first, which we already did, find a program, and you get taken to this page. So great, if you're in one of those 13 communities, there you go, there's all the information. There we go. If you scroll down, there's also a place where you can search by community. So um, I was playing with this yesterday. I've used it before. This, and I tried to use the place one. I didn't have a whole lot of luck with the place. So what I would do is put in the city that the family lives in or the city that your community that you mostly work in. So I'm just, I saw there's someone from Rockford here. I'm gonna put in Rockford and then put in your state just Illinois, um, and if I click search here, it's gonna give me within a 10 mile radius. So again, some of these home visiting programs serve by county, some serve by school district. Um, they vary, but this will give me an idea, and if I scroll down, I can see that these are the different home visiting programs that might be likely to serve a family living in Rockford or in that region, the county. Um, so we have Winnebago County, county Health Department, City of Rockford, and that one specifies that it's an early head start, early head start um, there. We've got the school district, the YWCA. So this does not go as specific as what model it is, but again, you could go to their websites, get a little bit more information about that. So there's an example for Rockford. Let's go south. Let's go to, let's go way south. Let's go to Carbondale. all the way down there, okay. So you can also see in Carbondale, there's a few different ones. So we have um, some out of school districts. So that would probably tell you if it's a school district, they'd have to be within the boundaries of the district. And then there's other ones that are, um, here's a Shawnee Healthy Services, um, Archway. So these may have a little bit different boundaries or service areas than the school district. So this could be a really helpful starting place. It's not perfect, right? So you may be looking for someone, a family um, that lives in Marion and over here, and then all of a sudden they, you find out that they're not within the boundaries. But if they're neighboring communities, they usually can tell you about another home visiting program available close or point you in a good direction to give you some information. So hopefully that is something that you can make use of for those of you who do not have coordinated intake currently in your community. So if we can, we'll go back to the slideshow. All right, uh, let's see here. Stop that. And there we go. Thank you. All right, let me give you uh, control again. There you go. Okay, here we go. Great. So we've talked about home visiting, a little bit about collaborating with early intervention. Really, the reason we want to do this is we want to support families, right? We're all in the work of working to help support families, help encourage them, um, encourage parents in their role. 
And so if we think about how does us partnering together do that? You know, families and children that are involved in early intervention or home visiting all have some identified risks, right? And they probably have an increased risk of child abuse and neglect simply because you know, we know that children who have delays are more likely to be abused or neglected and they, the other risk factors, the social factors that make them eligible for home visiting also um, are, can be risk factors for that. So when we get to work together, we get more opportunities to focus with parents on their child's development and their health and well-being as a family. And we get to support one another's work. Imagine a parent sharing with you, yeah, my home visitor told me I really should be putting my baby down for tummy time because it's good for strengthening her muscles and her neck, but she doesn't like it. She cries every time. What a great opportunity to support one another's work. So just reiterate that message that, yeah, you know what, your home visitor was right when she said that, and I know it can be hard, but, and maybe to think through some ways that you can support the parent in doing that. And that can go both ways. Um, encouraging families and their goals, whether it's a home visiting asking, home visitor asking about the progress on an IFSP goal, or a speech therapist asking about the mom's goal to read to her child every night. We get to support families' you know, growth together. And multiple professionals supporting parents and their all important roles in the lives of their children. And we get to highlight their strengths, their challenges, their successes, and build their confidence in, as parents. And just remind them that they truly are the expert on their own child. So that to me is some of what's exciting about this work when we partner together, how we support one another, but ultimately we support the well being and health of families. Okay, so where do we start? I know we're all busy, right? And I appreciate you taking time to come to this webinar today. I really wanna encourage you to start, think about starting really small. Okay, so something like get to know one home visiting program in your community. Maybe you look on iGrow and you see what's available and you get to know about one of them. Or meet one home visitor, make it a point to meet them who's working with one of the families you provide services to. What about exploring the iGrow website? Just going on there, looking around, seeing what's available. Or looking for a community group that home visitors are a part of and attending one meeting. Calling the coordinated intake worker in your area. So if you're in one of those 13 communities, calling them and just saying, you know, I heard about this coordinated intake thing. I just want to learn a little bit more about it. Or inviting a home visitor or a program to your local interagency council meeting for them to share about their work there. So one small step can lead to another and coming together is really the first step. So coming together is the beginning. Continuing to stay in contact, that's the progress. And the ultimate goal is us working together for the success of both our systems and the families we have the opportunities to serve. So I like this quote from Henry Ford saying, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And that's really, I think, the goal that early intervention and home visiting have is that continuing to work together, to work towards that. Um, I did want to highlight, if you do work for a CFC and you'll be attending either one of the conferences next month in Palos Hills or O'Fallon, there, look for a home visiting table in the exhibits. Um, there'll be a coordinated intake worker at each table to answer questions and share more about home visiting. And I am lucky enough to get to be at one of those tables as well. Um, and someone else from the ounce will be at the other. So that's another little small step you could take, is just stop by and ask about a little bit more about home visiting services. So as we get ready to end our time together today, I just wanted to take a minute to think, and since you've been so receptive on the chat box, to ask you to share a little bit about what from this webinar will you be thinking about as you return to your work this week, maybe this afternoon or tomorrow, what's something that you'll be thinking about? I have lost my chat box again. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll uh, just kind of read to you the uh, the responses that come in. So thank you. Uh, yep. Now it's the it's the waiting. It's, yes, that's right. It's the waiting. Erin says to start small. 
um, and to uh, check out the iGrow website. Let's see. Um, Charlotte is asking or is commenting about how current policy and procedure can support collaboration. So, you know, there's a lot. I know she made a comment about that as well, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But, um, you know, I know that um, there there's some aspects to policies and procedures that may seem like they they uh, hinder some collaboration, but we'll talk about ways that that's that's not the case. Um, Crystal says the the iGrow website is a great resource. Um, Emma's talking about starting interacting with other programs in her area to better serve the families. Let's see. Leah is talking about working together. Um, a lot of folks are saying that they love the iGrow website. Uh, Nicole is saying it's amazing how many supports are out there besides EI and just wanting to take an opportunity to learn about those programs in their area. Um, lots of folks just kind of want, have, wanted to learn. Uh, Katie's talking about how she's got families on her caseload that could uh, assist some of these uh, other outside services. Looks like, um, again, some more comments about um, the website and, and learning about all the other programs. So lots of, lots of, uh, Lots of things that folks are going to be thinking about as they return to work this week. Um, and uh, some are saying, you know, just kind of reminding folks about the iGrow website and how there's so much information on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that one of the struggles that as I talked with a service coordinator um, was saying, you know, sometimes we don't know that a family is not going to be eligible until, you know, they have the the, they get the evaluation back. And then at that point, they're not having a face-to-face -face meeting. So they're not able to say, oh, here, by the way, here's this you know, resource you can have um, for this specific home visiting program because you don't have the permission to share the family's information with the home visiting program. But I think the iGrow website can be a huge um, resource than that, but that's something you could share with a family on a phone call or something and just telling them about this great service that's available, even though they're not eligible, you know, if they're not, don't hit the percentage, they're not eligible for EI services, there are other programs that they may be eligible for. So I think the iGrow website can be really powerful for families as well to be able to look at. Absolutely. And I know that Shanta is talking about just thinking about the similarities and differences of the program. So, um, you know, there's just, I, I think um, you've just been able to open the eyes of, of some folks on here on, on you know what is available and where you can go to find out more information. So I think that's been our biggest issue is we just we just don't know where to go. So uh, being able to do that, and I know that there are a couple people that now are asking about how can we better collaborate. So I don't know if you want to start that that um, discussion or if you want me to to kind of pipe in from the EI perspective or. How do you want to handle that, Karen? Um, I can just share a little and then I'll turn it over to you. But I, yeah, I think collaboration really usually starts with a relationship between two people. It starts small, right? It doesn't start with these huge systems, everybody coming together. It starts with a couple of people. And so if you are in charge of, you know, organizing an interagency council, then to look at inviting a guest speaker or to, you know, look at how you could invite yourself to a meeting. I mean, I, I'm guilty of doing that. I'd really love to hear more about what you're doing. Could I come to one of your meetings? And just in introducing myself and getting the opportunity to share who I was and what I did, people are like, oh, home visiting, what's that? And so I think some of those willing, willingness is just to put, to put ourselves out there and get to know a person um, as usually where it starts and opportunities come from, from that. Um, so I think I used to work in DuPage County and was part of the Home Visiting Network there. And it's a monthly meeting, but because of some intentionality and willingness on both parts, there is a representative from early intervention at almost every meeting. And so it's been a way for you know, just that collaboration to happen between you know, maybe one person from each home visiting program and one person from EI in that region. But it's been really powerful and just helps um, bridge some of the the gaps and some of the you know barriers that have existed before. And I love how um, uh, Jen had mentioned earlier about when when the referral comes from a home visiting program that she schedules tries to schedule the intake 
um, with that home visitor uh, at, at that time so that, you know, it's kind of this, this we're a team. It's, it's again, um, demonstrating that, that uh, parallel process and how we are a team, we work together. And that is a great way to do that from the very beginning um, with the service coordinator just kind of starting out. Now, that's if you know that the program exists. So some of that has to do with just asking, you know, asking the questions and, and, and keep digging a little bit to, to see what programs might be involved with this family, I think, as well um, during that intake visit. But also, you know, as, as providers start going and working with families, they, they um, you know, families start dropping little pieces of information and that sometimes we're like, whoa, whoa, what's that? <laughs> you know, so somebody else is coming to your house? Uh, who, who might that be? You know, and so it's a matter of not letting those things just go, but to maybe follow up. And can you tell me more about what, what that is? Uh, and then, you know, again, communicating with amongst the team. So I know a lot of folks are also a little bit, you know, kind of questioning, okay, so I get that. We can do that. I can go to an LIC meeting. I can invite the home visitor to come to our meeting. I can even, you know, on my own time, um, learn more about the programs that exist in my community and go to one of their meetings. Um, but I, I know uh, some of them are th probably thinking about how do we, how can we do services together? And so again, that's, you know, first off, having those home visitors be a part of that IFSP team, uh, inviting them to, to participate in that. Uh, and then also thinking about okay, when we are looking at services, maybe trying to coordinate our services when the home visitor, you know, not every time, but maybe occasionally when the home visitor is going to be present and, and do, uh, you know, like a co-treat session. And now that, again, that's a strategy that is part of the IFSP um, and as long as that is built into that IFSP, there's definitely, um, that's a great way to collaborate and show the family that we're, we are a team. And I see um, Aaron is talking about how from the uh, infant mental health perspective that it, it really is all about developing those relationships and, and learning that, you know, um, also what each program does. Uh, and so that we're not necessarily duplicating services, that we are uh, enhancing each other's services. And Jen is talking about just remembering to add the home visitor to the first page of the IFSP. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just again, um, communicating that information, documenting that information can, can really help. I don't know if, um, I know Charlotte is still on here, if she has some other comments that she wants to make about that, um, about the collaboration, feel free to Charlotte, uh, let us know. Um, any other thoughts, Karen, about the collaboration? I, I just think it's really powerful. And I know, as you sit and think about it, that it, it takes more time than just doing things separately. Um, but I have experienced just the power of it for my own understanding and my own being able to support, you know, the services that I maybe refer to family for. Um, and just being, um, I'm not gonna, I can't think of how to say this the right way, but being another like hearing about what goes on and being an advocate for the services. So sometimes you know, things are going on that the family doesn't understand or they may not be um, so happy with, you know, it may be difficult for their child to do what the interventionist is asking them to do, but being able to support the family through that and be another, um, home visitors really can be another, you know, advocate for the services and for why it's important. And, and that goes both ways. So I think even just our, communications and the language we use about each other can be really powerful to a family too. So, you know, if they start out with early intervention services and are referred to a home visiting program, encouraging them you know, to stay with it, even if their schedule gets busy or um, they're not really sure about it. Or same thing with early intervention, you know, it gets to be a lot to have multiple people coming in to think about how we can alleviate that for parents. But the messaging that we give I think is really important and is really powerful when we have that relationship with the parent. Um, either one, it can go either way. What we say really matters and is more than just getting a flyer or a phone number to call. So I think the way we talk about each other can be really important as well. Absolutely. Um, we're there to support each other and support each because we've all got that child and family's best interest at heart. And the one thing that we don't want to do is, is, um, is, 
adversely affect the relationship of other programs or, or that the family may have. So um, just really has supporting each other is very important. So, all right. Well, um, it looks like I'm, I'm kind of looking at the chat and, uh, um, you know, just I, I think this collaboration is really struck for a lot of people. So uh, just thinking about how you can learn a little bit more. Some of that is going to be just taking some time, um, which is hard. We all, you know, we're, we're all very busy, but just taking some time to learn a little bit more, explore the websites, maybe find out where the meetings are. Uh, and then some of that is going to be as you are providing services. So, um, all right, uh, Karen, we got about three minutes left. Do you have uh, any anything else that you wanted to um, finish up with here? Uh, just a big thank you for all of you to for participating today. I'm excited to go and tell home visiting programs that I work with almost on a daily basis about how many people were interested and came um, to this webinar and just your commitment to working with um, home visiting. So thank you very much and please do feel reach out feel free to reach out to me. I put my contact information up there and I am very happy. As I said at the beginning, this is something near and dear to my heart that I'm passionate about and really wanting um, just to see how we can continue to work together. So feel free to reach out to me at the ounce um, and I will be happy to get back with you. If other questions come up or a resource that I mentioned that you can't find, I'm happy to provide that for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. This was a very informative webinar. I know I learned a lot of new things today. And, and I've been around the system for a long time. So uh, I've always have been had a little confusion about, okay, how do these home visiting programs fit? Uh, so this was really, uh, uh, really informative. And thank you so much. I do want to, uh, again, remind folks that um, here's the, uh, oh, I'll go back here. Um, uh, information about the ounce. So if you want to contact the ounce of prevention fund, uh, here's some contact information. I believe um, when uh, you will get an email after this, that'll have all those links that we posted in the chat box. So if you didn't get a chance to check those out during the webinar, you know, you'll have another opportunity to do so. I want to remind you all that you will also get, um, so there might be two emails. One that is the one that includes the survey and one that then has all that other information. Um, and so just make sure that you do complete the survey so that you can get your certificate of attendance. And I wanted to just thank everyone. I know some of you have been on every single webinar that we've offered. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, we try to do this every winter season. So we have wrapped up with Karen's webinar. This is our last winter webinar uh, series. Not our last webinar, you know, but for the winter webinar series. We will be back next year, January 2021. 20, uh, um, but in the meantime, visit the EI website for future webinars and face-to-face -face events and any updates to any events that might be occurring over the next couple of months. So, um, you know, as we all are uh, watching the news and making sure that, uh, you know, so just pay attention to the website to, for any updates. And with that, I want to say thanks again. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you.